So if you'll recall from our last lesson, we had created a method that set up all of the appropriate properties with our GPP sign-in object and created all the appropriate delegate methods, but we hadn't actually called the method that sets anything up or for that matter done anything to sign the user in. So let's do that now. We're going to go back into our code and let's add a view did load method. And we'll say super view did load. And then we can initialize this GPP sign in object. And then we can take this shared instance and call authenticate. And this is basically the call that tells our sign in object, okay, now let's attempt to sign in the user. So let's try this now, see what happens. Hey, look at that. We're set right into our OAuth dialog. Now before we go on, let's take a look at this URL here. I'm going to uh, select all. Of course, it turns out this doesn't actually select all. Let's go from here. All right. Now I'm going to copy this. And let's open up a random text file here and paste this in. And we get this giant URL. But let's break this up by the URL arguments and take a look at this thing. Does this look kind of familiar to you? This URL looks pretty similar to the one we had in our presentation. Remember this one? We went to accounts.google.com, we set the client ID, we set the scope, and we set a redirect URI. Well now let's go back and look at our URL and you can see here we have a scope, we have a client ID, and we have a redirect URI. There's a few other things that we've added here. This response type code means give me back a one-time code. This line basically specifies the user's language. This state variable is used to help deter cross-site forgery requests. And this GP SDK basically just says that the request came from the Google Plus SDK version 1.3. But look at that. This giant URL, you pretty much know what's going on. We're saying, hey Google, here's our client ID. This is our guess my number application. We're asking for the auth slash game scope. And when you're done, send it back to com.google.guessmynumber colon slash OAuth2 callback. Look at that. We're now able to make sense of this giant URL. So now let's go back to our simulator here and uh, scroll down. And I'm going to click accept. Now at this point, it redirects back to our application, which is good, right? Because that's what we specified in our redirect URI. Go to com.google.guessmynumber. However, if we were to take a look at our console output in Xcode, we don't see anything. We didn't get to this finish with auth error handler. And the question is, why not? Well, that's because while mobile Safari does correctly redirect back to our application, our application does nothing to handle that URL. It just kind of gets sent to us and we ignore it. So we need to do something about that. And this is something we do within our app delegate. So go over to your app delegate. And let's import Google Plus slash Google Plus dot H. And we're going to add another method here. We're going to add application open URL source application annotation. This is basically the method that gets called when your application receives some sort of URL and is asked by the system, hey, can you handle this? It returns yes if it's able to properly handle it and returns no if it says, I don't really know what to do with this thing. Now it turns out this method is pretty simple because the Google Plus library includes its own method that does most of the heavy lifting for you. So first, just in case actually you're curious, let's add in a little NS log that shows the URL that we received. So I have received the URL to handle, and we can call URL absolute string. And then we're just going to call the class method GPP URL handler handle URL source application annotation. So the URL here is URL, source application is source application, and annotation is annotation. 
So we put this in a conditional. We're basically checking with Google Plus and saying, hey, does this look like a URL you can handle? If it does, we return yes. Otherwise, we'll return no. In case you're saying to yourself, hey, that's extra code, why not just say return this? The answer is that this might work if the only URL you are ever going to check against is one sent from Google+, but in reality, there might be URLs you're going to want to handle. So more likely than not, there might be another else if here and another else if and, and so on before you finally return them. So that's why we wrote it that way. So now we can run this and let's see what happens. Again, we're taken to the Guess My Number application. I click Accept. We get redirected back to our application, and look here. We've got a whole bunch of OAuth information here in our log. You can see the URL we received, and uh, this code equals blah, 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 blah. This is our one-time use code that the system received. It then exchanged that for a bearer token, and since everything worked as planned, our GPP sign-in object called finished with auth error. And in this case, our auth is a GTM OAuth2 authentication object that includes an access token, a refresh token, and our one-time use code, along with an expiration date. And our error here is null because we ran into no errors. So look at that. We received our bearer token from the system, and we've successfully signed the user in. Of course, it turns out I still kind of lied to you. Uh, we signed the user in, but we just did it by calling authorized during view did load. This isn't the greatest user experience. You don't want your player taken to an OAuth2 dialog before he or she has even had a chance to, you know, see your game's title screen. So we really are going to add a sign-in button to initiate the sign-in process. And really, honest this time, we're going to add it in the next lesson. Have I ever lied to you before? So stick with me. Sign-in button's coming next. Ba 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 ba